Welcome students to robotics training for Fanuc Robotics. Um, this is actually the uh, handling tool operations training. Today we're going to go over touching up points. If you will turn page 178, 179, it's chapter 11.9 in your books, and we will follow that up by lab number 16. When we're touching up points, guys, um, what we're actually doing is taking the positions um, that are already into a program, and we're going to resave their orientation in the out in, in the air, actually where it's at. It's going to re-record those points over that inside of an existing program. You're going to notice throughout your um, throughout the pages, you're going to see these notes. Pay special attention to these notes. It don't matter if they're one color or if they're red. If they're red, it could be a, a, a hazard issue, so you want to make sure you listen, to, uh, read those and pay close attention to them. Uh, this one, like this one says, it says while testing programs or running production, it may be necessary to change positional data. This is referred to as touching up a point. When you touch up a point, only the positional data will be saved. Uh, it'll be changed and saved over top of what was there. Uh, this is the box. Remember the box program we wrote last? This is, the, we actually have two boxes on here. You have the big one and the small one. We used the small one like a diamond and we recorded those points for it to go down and trace over top of those points. What we're gonna do in this lab, we're actually gonna take and use the same program because it's the exact same movements and everything. But we're going to take and just save these four points here as the point data. Okay. You may have to do that in industry because of part size changes or maybe the orientation of the part. It may be shifted off to the side or turned like a diamond versus a square. And you have to be able to set that up and get that to actually work the way, uh, the way you need it to. So this is a quick, easy step of how to set that. Now here's one of those notes. It says when changing from T1 and T2, which I'll remember T1 and T2 is actually the, the switch right here on the front, of the, uh, the front of the control panel. Whenever you switch that, it is gonna throw up an error code. Uh, it will always do it, no matter what. It'll throw that up and it will be necessary to hit the reset key to, to reset the fault that it shows. That's just to keep you from actually doing that when it's actually running and can cause a major crash. So it wants to fault. Whenever you touch up a point, the motion type, the speed, and the termination of the, of the movement, which is when, where, how it stops. Am I gonna stop slow? Am I gonna stop very quickly, immediately? Uh, all of that's gonna remain the same. Nothing else is gonna change, just that positional data, okay? But by only changing the positional data, the path should remain largely unchanged. However, it is always recommended that you test your change for accuracy prior to running it in automatic. So what does that mean? We're gonna run it in step mode and in automatic. I mean, I'm sorry, and in manual. Manual is the key. I don't wanna take and just throw something automatic after I changed it and it just it start running on its own step by step not, uh, without you having control of it. When you do it in, in manual, it is done, remember we talked about, at a lower speed at a lower percentage speed so you protect it from crashing. Um, crashing is important to keep from happening, not only um, for the machine itself, you don't want to damage it, but you can also damage or hurt somebody. So you, you definitely want to try to prevent that. This is the procedure. Um, you'll actually start with one. You'll, you'll, you'll come up when you boot the machine up. Of course, it comes up to this, uh, this program screen or the, the home screen. And it's going to ask you, more or less, what is it asking us? It's asking us, uh, what do we want to look for? So right now we're going to be teaching something, right? So you would select the program that you have, which is what's called boxes. So we would, we'll click that, and we'll, the, the drop-down window will come up. Oops. The drop-down window will come up, and you will pick boxes and hit enter. That will open up to the drop-down window showing your actual step-by-step -step program. 
each one of your points. As we recall, P means point. And uh, the letter code in front of that, L or J, is the type of movement. Remember we talked about your type of movement will stay the same? So if it's a joint movement, it's one thing. It's another if it's a linear. And we use that for the boxes, of course, because that makes that linear line type movement. So what you would do is you place your cursor, you just scroll down, place your cursor over top of the line that needs to be touched up. Okay, once we do that, we manually jog the robot to the new position. Because I'm over the point I want to change. Manually jog it. Question, what are the three buttons that have to be held down at the same time to manually jog the robot? Joyce? Uh, it's going to be the uh, dead man switch. Yes. Uh, the shift. And yes. the X and Y to move it around. Very good. Yes. What about resetting the fault? Yes, you would definitely have to reset the fault. And why? Anytime we release the dead man switch, it's going to throw a fault. So when we go back to run it, exactly, we have to reset that fault and it'll clear up. There's the three keys. Um, that, that, that axis plus or minus, of course, is our what? It's our direction and joint of movement. So that's, that's the one you'll hit for your directional. Hey, once you do that and you get it to the place, the location that you want the new point to be touched up to in location, you will actually, will actually be on this screen and you'll see right down here at the bottom, you see the, the, the key, the touch screen that says touch up. You will hit that. And it will give you this, um, it will give you this language here. It'll talk about that the touch up point uh, has, uh, has actually been saved right down here. It's been recorded. There is one thing to think about though, and I, I didn't see it on my slide there, but it has to, when you do a touch up, you do have to have the shift key held. Uh, the reason why they do that, if I you have to have two hands and I'm holding shift and then I hit touch up to save that point, what it does, it allows me not to make a mistake as easy. Because if I'm just sitting there and somebody accidentally punches, punches touch up on the screen, I just lost my positional data. You don't want that. You want it to have multiple steps. So you do have to hold down the shift key when you touch that for it to accept this. If not, it will come up and tell you shift has to be pressed. Okay, if you see this, this is another one of those red letterings. It says, if you see the message, uh, set new ID, uh, ID along the bottom of the teach pendant. If you see that box, and it's going to ask you yes or no. It's asking me that because it, it realized something was, was off a little bit. If you look, do you notice there's actually a P1 and a P1? It's in two locations. It's actually going to ask you, do you want to set that new ID of P1 globally throughout the program? So do you want all of P1s to be that location? Or do you want to leave the other one or this one? Uh, you want to change it. And if you hit yes, uh, set new ID, that position is going to register for both of those in the program. If that does not, if you hit no, what will it will do, it will actually assign the one that you're on. So we're up here on this one. You notice P5 was the last number? It will change that to P6 automatically. That way you don't override every one for position for P1 in the entire program. And that's what it was talking about in this slide. It's talking about option uh, four and five. says position four is selected, position ID is current, uh, of the current line will change, next available ID will be set. So you see this one actually changed it to six. That's the example of what I was talking about there. If I was hit, it will leave them at P1 and globally it will change. So if P1 happens to be in that program six times, it's going to change that positional data in every location to make that the new location for that. Which 
it gives you options to do them both. Instead of me having to go in and, and try to find that same location six different times and change it, you can change it all at once. Okay. After that, what do we do again? What did I talk about? Test it. Always test it. Failure to test the changes in the program may result in a crash or undesirable outcome. So uh, it's kind of nice they don't talk about injury, but that's kind of what they mean there. You don't want it to crash, you don't want it to break part of the robot or part of the fixture that you're going to have to work on. Okay, this time we're gonna get up and we're gonna move over to the machines and I'm gonna allow you guys to do your lab. Um, it's right at the end of that chapter and we'll start on that. Thank you. All right, guys. You need more time. You're only yes, at 11 I, minutes. Gonna, I wanted to stop up in front of it and uh, just do it like y'all have before, guys. Y'all have already done a little bit of this in here. Um, go ahead and turn on the switch. Yep. The rocket ship's taking off. Oh, the yeah. Okay. As it's booting up, guys, always remember when it's doing this, it takes a little bit of time, but it's just like a computer. It is a computer system. What is it going to do when it first boots up? Self diagnostics. It's going to come up, it's going to look for problems. So if, if, if it has something wrong, an ailment, it's going to come up and tell you I have something wrong. Uh, feel free to talk to your, co your other students here as to where each step that you're going through. Or if you see something going on, make sure you tell them. Very good. You, you are in step mode, which is the best mode to do this in, and you're in world coordinate system, right? Yeah, it'd be right here in world. What does it say, join? This is join. Hey, coordinate button, we'll change that, and go down to, uh, actually, release shift and hit coordinate, and you'll see it just change. You want it to say world, there you go. And now you're in world and step. Now you can go ahead and hold your shift and tell it to run forward. Put it in step mode. Okay. Now you can. Okay, from here, go ahead and hit it again. Uh, take it back there. Hit. hit. Hit it again. Okay, keep going. Once it comes down to your first position, right there. Go ahead now and and manually drive using the world mode back over to the first corner. Uh, and you can go with any corner. You can do the back corner, front corner, yeah. any corner. And then you'll say that's when you'll do the touch up of the. There you go like that and now while holding shift press touch up position has been recorded okay go ahead and, and shift it down one you want to release shift from that yeah if you hold shift and hit up or down like that it'll jump the whole program down okay. so you just want to hit it one time with the shift off take it down to the next position now hit shift again and move it Shift it right over to the next one. Now, while we're doing that, why did we put this in world mode? If I left it in join, it's going to move each little arm, each little piece independently. 
and it will take you forever to get it there because you got to try and dial each one in. Well, when I do it in whirl, this right here. exactly, it's going to use your right hand rule around the base of the robot and it's gonna move it and keep that laser point just where you want it to bring it to that point, quick and easy. Oh, the joint Yes. Control each piece individually. Once you have them done, you should be able to go up there. Anna? Yes, Anna. And now you should be able to jog it through and it'll go back home. It should come down and go to the actual other box with the same program, but going to the other positions perfectly. Okay. Very good guys, good job. And each one of y'all will take your turn doing that. You can change it back to the other position and so on the whole way until y'all get, get practice up and do it, okay? Looks good. Thank you.